Hiya, what are you here? Welcome back. Um, I hope you are well and looking forward to today's video, which as you can see is a collab with my good friend Laurie. We've been deciding on, we decided to do a video on um, making a journal using Poundland or Dollar Tree supplies. So basically a, a journal under £10 using only the pound shop resources. Um, so basically she's doing like the Dollar Tree version and I'm doing the pound shop re version because she's in America. And so we went out and bought our supplies basically. This was actually a long time ago, it was like two years ago now. So I can't even remember what's in this bag. <laughs> but we're going to do a little sort of mini haul, mini haul and show you what I've got and kind of jog my own memory of what I've got. And this will be the supplies that I can use to create my journal. And nothing really else other than obviously tools like pens, pencils, kind of thing. So, I'm just going to grab everything out. And like I said, this was like two, three years ago. So I don't remember everything that's inside the bag. But I do remember that it all came down to a pound. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is everything that I got with my £10. Some of this stuff is free. For instance, these wallpapers. I actually found a pound land that sells wallpaper. That sold wallpaper. It's not even the pound shop that I did use, like that I bought these from. It isn't even there anymore. It was the Brayhead pound land. And um, it's now shut down, but they did sell wallpaper and you can get free wallpaper samples from any place that sells wallpaper. Um, so if, like for us in the UK, if you went into B&M's or um, any kind of place that, that's the only one I can think of for the dumb head. But like for instance, B&M sells a lot of wallpaper. You can rip off, a, rip off a sample for completely free and take it home with you. So I got a bunch of those. I think I just took one of each of the samples, like the wallpapers that they had. I got a tea towel for some reason. <laughs> um, I got two books. So I got Sleeping Beauty, which has really pretty imageries, imagery and stuff like that in it, obviously. And then I also got this. Um, it says now £3, but it would have been a pound when I got it. And this is just purely so that I've got the hardback cover to basically gut it and then this will be my cover for my journal. Obviously I could have done the same for this one. Any hardback kind of material would work. You don't even have to do a hardback. Um, I'm doing a hardback and Laurie is doing a soft back cover. Um, so here I have got um, 80 GSM paper and there is 70 sheets which is plenty and I will be tea dyeing these. And then I've got some embroidery thread, which obviously I will use for binding my journal. And it's obviously got several colours that I can use for other things as well. I've got some washi tape. One, two, three, four, five washi tapes. And a sort of um, botanical theme. I have some glue sticks. I've got some doilies. And I've got some tracing paper and then some lined paper. And then I've got this um, PVA wood glue and a instant polish brown leather um, shoe polish, which is great for like distress inks and even stamping. So this is everything that I got. Um, I'll also show you the individual... Um, wallpaper styles that I got. So these are like embossed as well which is really pretty and it's got like gold and silver designs on it and I've got a really decent size one. I wanted to use one of these as my cover um, so I tried to get reasonably large um, samples 
of them. And I love this one. This one's just so pretty. So yeah, if you go into any place that sells wallpaper and it's got wallpaper rolls on display, you can take a rip off or a sample for free. They don't generally charge you for it. This one is like a, um, it's like a bathroom feeling one. So it's got like, like that plasticky feel to it. So it's like a bathroom styled um, wallpaper. And we have this one. Is also beautiful, and then this one. So a lot of them are quite similar to each other, but I'm okay with that. Then this one, and lastly, this one's quite sexy as well. Oh, this one. And like I say, these were completely free. So, a wonderful resource if you like to use wallpaper. Um, even as decorative paper in your journal or as pockets and things like that. Obviously, we talk about using vintage wallpaper quite a lot. But you can use modern wallpaper just as well. And like I said, it's mostly you can get it for free if you don't buy the full roll, obviously. Which you don't generally need a full roll. Um, for decorating anyway but yeah so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to gut our book so I'm going to take this sleeve off and pop that in the bin and grab my pencil case like I said I'm only going to be using tools I didn't buy. I won't be using like any extra bits and bobs. It'll just purely be tools. For instance, my little knife here. Um, let's see here. But I hope everyone is doing well and is looking forward to is looking forward to watching this little series like I said Laurie and I are both taking part so I will link Laurie's video down below um, she is doing a soft cover um, journal yeah. um, so I'm just trying to be very careful that I don't obviously cut straight through into the spine. I'm literally putting the tiniest amount of my blade into the crook there and just slowly bringing it down. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. It's slightly easier on the other side because you can obviously kind of pull this out. Like so. And don't, don't throw that away because we've now got a bunch of papers. And this has even got like photographs we can use, which is awesome. Um, for embellishments as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so we've got that section there and then there seems to be another one, another section here where it's showing off different photographs. But yeah, if you're obviously going the route of gutting a book, don't throw the pages away because they are very, very handy for embellishments. So now I'm just peeling off this end paper. And that can go in the bin. So 
So here's where we decide whether or not we want to keep this spine or if we want to make it a larger spine. So I'm pretty sure that that's why I bought the tea towel um, was to make it a larger spine um, because it's always better to use fabric if you're making a spine because it obviously it is stronger. But I don't know what I might. Let me think. Um, no, I think I want a bigger spine than that because it is really small, especially for a junk journal. <clears throat> so, I'll try and clear some of this stuff out the road for a second <laughs> so it's not all in my way. Oh, you get two. Two tea tiles. And let's see here. I'm gonna like obviously this is the board here. So I'm gonna lay my ruler right up against the board and use that as my guide for where I'm going to trim off the excess. There we go. And then the exact same thing on the other side. So this little project kind of came to us a few years ago when we kind of watched everybody turn junk journals into kind of show books. And um, we kind of wanted to bring it back to basics and show that you don't need to have millions and millions of supplies and 20,000 digital kits and everything AliExpress has to offer in order to have a junk journal. We wanted to show you that you can literally go grab £10 worth of items out of the pound shop and probably even less than that if you went into a thrift store or a second hand store. You could probably get a book this size for like 20 pence in a second hand store and other fabric that's better than for instance a tea towel. But um, looking at these two this one has a sort of thinner, um, tighter thread count so it's not as loose so it's stronger so this is the one I'm going to use but yeah we wanted to kind of bring it back to the basics and show that you don't need to have all the bits and bobs to have a journal you can definitely have a journal without having to break the bank so let me see here I'm going to cut this part off, this little um, seam here. If my scissors will allow it. There we go. Let me sharpen my scissors, I think. So I'm just kind of keeping it right close up to that seam, and that's going to help keep my line straight. There we go. So, <clears throat> pull that off. Again, actually, I'm going to just kind of trim this seam here. There we go. So now, to be so 
So if I cut it there. And then I'm going to make another one. There we go. So now here and empty that over there <laughs> and this is the strong and clear PVA wood glue I'm going to be using just so I can get into it. That was easier than I thought it would be. And I am just going to pop some in there. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to basically have it sitting like this and then wrap these bits over at the top and the bottom and then I'll have the other bit that goes over like this and then especially on the actual spine that will add um, extra strength because I will be adding glue here as well. So. Let's see here. Obviously, I want it to be straight. So, I'm going to use the bottom of my um, cutting board here to line this up. And obviously I want it to be that they're far enough in that this has got a decent grip to the cardboard but not too far in that it's going to make the spine shorter than what I want it to be. So, adding my glue. I'm being quite generous with it, but I'm also making sure that it's nice and um, smooth rather than like lumpy or bumpy, for instance. <laughs> And I'm using the end that was cut originally, so this bit, because as you can see, these are more smoothed round than this side, and that's the side I want to be on the out end of my book. I don't want 
it to be too pointy because I do not have obviously book corners so I'm going to use the sort of gentler side just to make it easier on me I don't know why I did that, it's an old lemon way Lori <laughs> There we go. So now I'm going to add my glue here. And here. And then in the centre as well. And making sure that I also get the edges. And then pull that round nice and tight. And then I'm just using my brush to kind of push those corners and things in and adding a little bit of glue on top. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. And I'm kind of just dabbing the cloth. I don't want to like swipe because it is um, like delicate in a way. So if I was to like swipe it, I would move the whole thing. Which obviously, I don't want that. And obviously, you don't have to go through this stage if you would rather keep the book the same size but I'm just doing this in case you'd rather make it a different size no doubt you'll be able to find at least one hardback cover in the pound shop or dollar shop but that doesn't mean it'll be the right size that you want it to be when it comes to like your spine, especially when junk journals are concerned, because junk journals, you want a relatively decent sized spine so that you can fit as many pages in it as you can, whilst also, also making sure that you leave as much space in it for growth as you can. So now, just making sure that it lifts up without um, sticking. What I'm actually going to do is grab a piece of paper. Just a white blank piece of paper and I'm going to pop it underneath the spine and that means that it's not going to stick to the bottom of this and I can easily kind of pull it off if I need to. But I'm going to be adding my glue all the way down the fabric now and like I said I'm dabbing and slightly like pressing forward but I'm not pulling I'm being as gentle as I can so as not to pull the fabric out of place so how is everybody doing I hope you've had a nice summer or winter depending on where you are um, did you go on any vacations is it family um, I'd love to know what you've been up to. Um, I apologise that I've been kind of AWOL recently with the summer holidays and then we had a, a little family holiday away to a caravan park, which was amazing. Um, and then getting the kids sorted for going back to school and then getting back into our routine. <laughs> 
don't know what he shouted there. Um, but yeah, getting the kids back into a routine of going to school and all that jazz. Um, it's just kind of, it's been hard for me to get back into a routine of filming. Um, and because I was away for a week, I had to kind of catch up on some things in the shop. And it's just taken me a minute to kind of get back on track. But hopefully I am now. And I can get back into a rhythm um, with my videos. Well, oh, it's raining outside. I don't know if you can hear that rain. I love the sound of rain. Um, it rained a lot when we were at the caravan park, um, which I didn't mind too much because it was later on in the day, sort of evening time. I love the sound of rain, so I didn't mind it too much. Oh, sorry, my wee one came in there. Um, so I'm just going to press this down on top now. As you can see, I've left it slightly long again at the top and bottom. So I'm just going to push that into place and then. I'm going to lift this out of the way. And I'm going to add some glue here. Can I cover it and glue it again? And then do the same on the other side. Now the good thing about PVA glue is it does dry clear but it also dries harder as well. So again I'm just going to add some glue right along the spine. This time I'm getting kind of more um, tough again. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of pushing more at it this time than I was before because the fabric should kind of stick to the fabric below it and then it shouldn't be too um, loose, I guess you could say. So I'm going to just fold this over and then the same at the bottom
and this helps give stability to the two sort of weakest points um, of the book, the bottom and the top ridge. Um, so like when you're setting your book up on its spine, um, it's not going to kind of cave in on itself because it's just fabric. <clears throat> so when you're setting it up on itself like so, you don't want this part to be weak because then it'll kind of sag and you certainly don't want the bottom part to be weak because then it won't hold. So I'm being very generous with the glue here. And then again here. And then we can let this dry. So I'm just going to give this a quick wipe and then the same with this, this is just like a little tea bag like plate if you're wondering. <laughs> um, I got it in Asda and it's like you, where you rest your tea bag to dry before putting it in the bin but I just like it for adding glue, I think it's quite handy but yeah if you wondered that's what that's for. Um, and like I said, everything that I'm using I got in the pound pound shop, except obviously this brush I got from AliExpress and I think I got this pen from the works, this um, knife rather. But yeah, so I think we'll call it for today because this needs to obviously dry and I would recommend letting this dry um, for 24 hours so that it gets nice and hard and sort of kind of sets in place. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you look forward to part two. And like I said, definitely check out Laurie's video, which I will link below. And I will see you all again soon. Take care and God bless. Bye.